Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Trevor with you today, and I'm joined by my guest, Julie Wilkinson the founder and director of Wilkinson Accounting Solutions. Julie has over 12 years experience delivering financial expertise to a wide variety of companies. She's going to tell us more about that in a moment. But first, Julie, what's the key takeaway that you're going to be sharing with us today? Hi. um, So the key takeaway is going to be financial pitfalls for businesses to avoid by seeing regular financial information. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Yep. Definitely interested in... um, finding out more about that and it's such a key topic so it's good that you're here to share with us so welcome to the show thanks for joining us thank you nice to be here it's great so maybe kick us off with telling us a little bit more about Wilkinson Accounting Solutions how do you help businesses okay so we're an accounting and consultancy firm Um, we specialize in business acquisitions and helping people build exit strategy planning for their businesses alongside sort of helping organic businesses with um, analysing financial information. Um, And we ultimately work a a bit in partnership with our clients, helping them um, look at their business and their operations and how they can keep getting the right financial information to make decisions. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those areas, isn't it, that some people are really on top of it and other people just think, well, that's the accountants. that's what they do. I don't really need to be that involved as long as, you know, there's no emergencies going on. Um, but I like the, the way you help people is you give them more visibility um, with regards to the process. And as you say, visibility on the numbers and things like that. So that's really good. How did you share a little bit about your journey of becoming an entrepreneur? So I'm a chartered accountant by trade. I didn't go to university. I actually studied as an apprenticeship. So I started at lower level finance roles like finance assistants and bookkeepers. I basically worked my way up. Um, I decided to start. So before I had Wilkinson, the accounting firm, I actually had a CV writing business. That was like my first journey into sort of owning my own business. And that made me realize I was a little bit more entrepreneurial than I thought. Yeah. So the reason I started Wilkinson, so my last corporate job, I worked for a 250 million group retail company and they had done some acquisitions. And one of my roles was to go into those smaller businesses and help them integrate into the group. And when I went in, that was my first intake really into, I suppose, the SME world because I'd always worked for corporate. Yeah. And, um, and I was quite surprised at how, I suppose, poorly they, they were running without this information because I'd always been used to a structure. And I thought, or this company's struggling when they're being help, you know, supported by a massive group, how are the average business? Um, so I, I actually did a survey and I asked 20 businesses what their accountants did at year end, um, you know, or for them. And 100% only saw their accounts once a year. So that's what made me realise there was quite a gap because these were quite big businesses. I mean, these are businesses of all sizes up to about 20 million mm-hmm. turnover. Um, So that made me realise, cool, there's so many businesses that don't even know what's available to them. So that was really how Wilkinson started, because I knew from my background, um, I had quite a big USP against, I suppose, traditional accounting firms that were more tax orientated rather than sort of operationally focused. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's really good. And a lot of what we're going to be digging into is kind of the twofold aspect of building credible growth within companies um, and also balancing that with calculating the risks involved. Um, It's a big topic. Uh, We're only going to sort of touch a few bits of it. Um, But what would you say, just some strategic elements with regards to maybe building credible growth for business? So credible growth to me is, I suppose, (sighs) keeping trust in your stakeholders. And that could be a variety of things. That could be internal stakeholders, such as employees um, and external stakeholders. So, and that could be anyone from customers, suppliers to, I suppose, uh, other stakeholders like banks and like if you need funding for growth. Um, So to me, credible means keeping faith really with those people. And, And that comes from a variety of different sources from, I suppose, customers, it's giving them the right service, 
suppliers is paying them to terms so that you don't go and stop and then other lenders like banks might be well if you need in, if you need funding to grow um do you have the right information that they need so that's how i would see credible um to grow yeah what would you say would be one of the the aspects of sort of the financial information that maybe businesses fall over with and don't realize they need it when they are sort of asked to present that sort of evidence I think the main problem is people just don't know what information they can have. So typically my experience shows 95% of businesses, well, 100% when I did that survey, but now probably about 95 to 98% only see their accounts once a year. And that's a bit of a problem because one, they're not really seeing quick enough the profits and um, how their business is performing. Um, but two, they don't really know how that information is being pulled together. So if a scenario does come where you need quick, relatively quick funding to do something um, and you're kind of just relying on this process that happens once every 12 months, then you don't know how to do it quicker. And, and often the accountant you've employed or you're using isn't probably isn't set up, might not have the time at that point because they're not used to doing it. So you might have to wait months, which can sometimes be too long. Um, so I think that's probably the key issue is that people and, and then I think businesses sometimes think they know what's happening, but if they're not getting real information, the reality is then they're guessing yeah. and guessing generally is more risky than not making any decisions because you're you're thinking, you know, something when you don't know it's fact. Yeah. yeah. So would you say then to so one element, I suppose, is for the, the business owner to communicate more with the accountants of their expectation of actually this is what i need um how would they know about going what they need like with regards to frequency of visibility is it like monthly reporting quarterly what sort of from your sort of experience i know maybe that's quite a vague question because you cover lots of different size organizations but what would be a couple of considerations maybe for people listening thinking yeah i don't really keep it that close a track um on my finances i just leave it with the accountants but what would be the first steps they could take with regards to having a conversation to get more visibility uh, that will help them yeah so i think the first question is people need to ask themselves you know do they ever get to a point where they're thinking where they're not making a decision because they don't know what is the right one i think that's the starting point and and i think um if if you're at that point then it means something's missing yeah. Because if you had the information that you needed, you wouldn't feel that you couldn't make a decision. Um, so that I think that's probably the starting point. Um, the, the problem is a lot of accountants don't offer the type of thing that we do because they're not as experienced or, you know, they're churning out sort of the year end accounts. I'm not saying none of them don't. Um, so it can be difficult because people don't know to ask it and often who they're asking don't maybe deliver it um but obviously like we're here and there are firms out there that 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 can provide that but i think if you're if you're um yeah if you're questioning that whether you should do something or not to me that's telling you something's missing from the information you provided and in terms of what you should look for um well first of all i suppose it does depend on the size of business i mean i'd be saying any business over half a million would want at least a minimum of quarterly reporting um and when we say reporting we would be seeing that as sort of a full management account probably with at least a basic board pack um and board pack might seem a bit formal but what it really means is ultimately the um you get sort of a one or two pager which has your key kpis and the information that's driving the business um, and then obviously any sometimes it can be monthly or quarterly, depending on the size and the need. Yeah. Um, and then what comes off the back of that is how accurate that data is, because often people think, oh, I just get a management account and it solves the problems. But then if there's operational bottlenecks that are causing information, causing problems for the information to be accurate, which might not be financial information from the system, it could be KPI data. Um, because maybe their staff aren't filling in reports cor correctly or the information isn't available, then it's starting to look well. Uh, do you, sometimes you have to take a bit of a step back to get that information. So that's why what we offer is quite unique in a way, because although it is financial information, it's important to align that to sort of the non-financial KPIs that go alongside it. Otherwise, sometimes information doesn't always give as much relevance as it could. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose as well as sort of planning for growing the business and, and getting sort of financial 
uh, visibility, but also finan good financial housekeeping. Uh, the other aspect is you help with acquisitions as well, don't you? So whether that's you know, businesses preparing to exit or businesses growing through acquiring new new businesses as well. And that's such a key element to, to have in place for sort of authentic visibility of, yeah, this is actually an accurate snapshot of where the company is uh, from a sort of financial perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we work a lot with exit strategy plan and acquisitions. And I think what business owners, sometimes you have to sort of sit back and digest what's actually happening, because often people might have what I would call a bit of a lifestyle business. So they've earned a lot of money from it and they've had a good lifestyle. But just because you've done that doesn't mean it is a viable business to sell. Because ultimately, what most acquirers will be looking for is a business that's sort of independently ran, so not relying on the owner, because obviously the buyer that's buying the business doesn't want to run it. Yeah. So if, as the owner, you're having to step in and do a lot of work to make that luxury lifestyle, which might be fine because that's your job, that then luxury lifestyle probably isn't worth the same to somebody else because when that person's put an MD in, as an example, that might drop another 60 grand or 70 grand of profits plus extra staff. Actually, the business isn't as viable probably from a market perspective as maybe the owner thinks. Yeah. And that's why it's better to have this information because obviously you can you should have this information whether you're looking to sell or not. But obviously, if you're looking to sell, then you'd be looking at other things such as, you know, what is maybe the business valuation now and what would some what do you want it to be when you sell so that you can start getting it ready? So this is often why your operations is so important alongside the financials, because, you know, it isn't actually just the financials that people look at anymore. They do look at is this business commercially viable for the future? Um, and that isn't that is numbers, obviously, but it's also a lot to do with what surrounds the numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's a really key po point, uh, particularly for the entrepreneurs listening. Um, it, it's easy to to have such a personal business, which works for you, but as you say, when you then want to sell it on, um, nobody's going to pick it up quite like you have been running it. Uh, so you need to make sure, yeah, you've got good things in place. Is that one of the aspects, sort of? linked to more of the calculated risk side of things as well yeah i suppose calculated risk is the reality is there's always risk in business you know most people have to take risks and i think when you're going through a growth phase specifically that can be quite risky because that can be the time when you need additional staff or overheads when you're not necessarily generating the cash um the cash so that's where the risk factor comes in because you know, people don't want to go bankrupt, but they might be to like make decisions. So they need to manage their cash and their business tighter at certain times than others. Yeah. So a good example of calculated risk would be, let's just say you've won a couple of big contracts. Let's just say you're a construction firm and you've won a couple of big contracts and you know you need to buy your materials um, way in advance before you um take out the you know deliver the service yeah. um and the, the the company you're working for is quite big and they want to put you on long payment terms um construction industries often have a have an issue because um the, the company they're working for can go bust and maybe not pay so right. at that time so there's any decision that you face so if you're choosing to buy materials and you've taken a low deposit because that's what the person you're working for wants and they're also on a long payment term to me at that point it's a risk because yes you've you know yes you've got a contract and they say they're going to pay you but what happens if that you know supplier if that customer happened to go bankrupt or bust and didn't pay you then you've got a risk so you know, that is then a risk, a, a decision to make. Um, do I do I do the work? Do I give them then payment terms? Can I negotiate something different? Um, and how then do you actually fund that cash? Because it can be in hundreds of thousands, if not millions, potentially, depending on the size of the business. Yeah. And actually, how do you then fund that? And so then this is where they go together. Because if you don't have quick information, how do you give that to a third party to get funding? And you've and you've got to show them how you thought about that and you know how you're mitigating those risks. So, you know, do you do credit checks on them and things like that? So do as much as you can to mitigate it. So that's what I would say is calculated, you know, calculated risk. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it's part of the the way it's, you decide that is what sort of percentages of the turnover, the potential new work would that risk be? 
And are there other, you know, more safer investments, if you like, um, or contracts that kind of tick along and you know, yeah, you're more likely to get the revenue in and it's not, you know, that that can be the buffer if need be, if there's extensions on um, getting paid and things like that. So, yeah, and again, it's like if we see things clearly and understand the data, we can make informed decisions, can't we? If the more fuzzy it stays, uh, the less, you know, it's like with anything in it. If we don't have clarity in an area we can't really make good decisions um so yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah and i mean and in this scenario you know there is a way that you would do it so you know we the first thing we'd be doing is making sure we had a longer term forecast at least if they're not paying for 90 days you say that's saying you want at least a three to six month forecast uh, cash flow forecast just to show what are your ins and outs just to show just to see you know technically can the business afford that cash flow up until that person's going to pay you, you know, then what, but then what happens if they don't pay their 30 days late? What happens if they're 60 days late? So you do a bit of risk scenario planning. So risk, you know, scenario plan, say what if this and what if that? And I suppose ultimately you end up seeing where, what's the, where can't you go over? So let's just say this company then doesn't pay you for 60 days. You need to know, I can pretty much cope up until 90, but I can't cope after 120 so therefore you would have to be tracking that as you went along then to see um you know where are you and you know hopefully they'll just pay you but you know you'd be surprised how many people actually don't then get paid um because yeah. they're so they're so quick to rush the job that things like this do go wrong in the background all the time yeah it's missing some of the detail isn't it and also as i suppose part of that is not having sufficient contingency in place that if it does get extended that long you know what are the other alternatives that we could do if we had to you know mm -hmm. if push comes to shove how can we still get some sort of uh, return um, and negotiate or go elsewhere and that lots of different scenarios are involved with that um, what would you say would be um another aspect that maybe people listening whatever size their business is another area that they might overlook with regards to making sure they're financially credible and able to demonstrate that or just more from the risk aspect you've covered quite a lot um, and hopefully people listening will be thinking through actually yeah i need to have a conversation or you know i need to get a better visibility on where i am financially um but any other bits that maybe we've not touched on yet that you think would be really good from you know your experience with the people that you work with what some of the other trends and things you've seen where people make mistakes so, well, if I just start of a typical, we would call a planning cycle. So if we were going to say someone, what is best practice that we would recommend? That there's always a, a logical cycle. So we'd always start with a budget or forecast because ultimately we always say to people at the end of the day, it's what they want. So it could be they have an exit in mind or it could just be they want some form of lifestyle. And if you don't really have that vision, and we'd always be saying, look at that at least five years out, like where would you like to be in five years as the person who owns the business? Because um, then that gives us something to work towards. So we can build, because we can build out a three to five year forecast to see how you could potentially get to where they want to be. So that's step one. Then you would start breaking that forecast down to say, okay, so what does my business need to do to get there? Because obviously you can have the sales growth um, but that's OK, having it on a bit of paper, but it's the reality of how you deliver it. So who delivers it, when, how and what milestones do we have to reach? And often we would be recommending to people, um, especially with size, of, like biggest businesses uh, and bigger, I mean, probably over half a million. So not we're not talking millions and millions that you want to start looking at. Or have you got a management team involved in those decisions? Um, because ultimately, if you're trying to do everything yourself, you just can't. So then we'd be saying you'd be start looking at your KPIs. So you can build um, forecasts up in KPI level. So as an example, you might say, okay, to get to 1 million in year one, I need 50 customers. Um, but then somebody might go, okay, how am I going to get those customers? And then, so, and then somebody would be like, oh, I don't know what to spend on marketing, as an example. Yep. So then you'd go, okay, so what's your average conversion rate? Um, of conversion so then you could work back to work at how many people they have to speak to or how many quotes they have to give out and then that might work back to go okay but I know I only convert one in five yeah. and then you can come from that go okay so then a return on investment perspective we know you need to spend x budget and that's how you would start building your KPIs up to get a real forecast that has like some gravitat behind 
what somebody needs because then if you've got a marketing person you can actually give them something tangible um whether it's the right number or not is uh, is then the next thing isn't it it's managing as you go along so you've got step one you've got steps two so now you kind of have a budget with what you've got to do it's how you track that so the next thing you need is good a good bookkeeping system that's actually quite basic but something most people i find struggle with i'd say at least 98 percent of the balance sheets that we see don't balance and what I mean by balance is people might think, oh, I don't really understand what that means. It just means the integrity of the numbers. So like, as an example, the amount of times we see a VAT liability, but it doesn't actually match what VAT return they've submitted. Now, if they don't match, it will just be because somebody's probably posted a historic payment wrong. And that could be good. And, and, but those types of things are important because if you're seeing the wrong numbers, then that means you don't know what cash you've got to pay out. Um, so once you've got a good bookkeeping system, then it's about tracking it. So that's why you'd have your management accounts, because your management account should typically have actual versus forecast versus prior year. So you can see that. Um, so you can see the uh, and that would be pre and and balance sheet. And then ultimately, the cycle just continues. So you keep reforecasting, you keep um, setting your KPI, you know, looking at your KPIs, you keep analyzing, making decisions, and then going back around the cycle. Yeah. Um, I mean, you wouldn't obviously be reforecasting every single month, um, but the reforecast cycle might be dependent on how well you meet target. Yeah. You know, so if you're six months in and you're and you're on target, then you might not need to reforecast because you're doing something right. But but if you're three months in and you're really far away from budget, it might be we need to relook at this. Something's not right here. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the cycle that we would suggest. And I would say most people wouldn't have the, any finance support to give the most of that. They might have the bookkeeping side. And you notice there, I don't even talk about year-end accounts. Nothing there is even anything to do with what the accountant does, because that's something completely different that happens at year-end. This is um, ongoing analysis of financial information. And bookkeeping is basically the start of that process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really good i mean there's a lot of detail in there um as well and like a lot of business owners they don't start the business because they're really interested or particularly uh strong numbers and and that sort of stuff obviously you need a certain level of understanding uh but it's good that you've you've got this service available that kind of fortifies and, and helps them with the strategy the process uh, aspect um and some of those sort of first steps that they can take so that's really good one of the things i saw i was looking at your website earlier and you offer like a free integrity health check don't you to people that are sort of interested in exploring uh, what you do further so would that involve looking at some of those steps that you mentioned yeah well the integrity check, health check normally works from the exit side because people that come on the exit strategy um people will come to us and say oh i think i'm ready to sell what do you think so we'll do a quick check of the numbers and see whether right. it could yes. be anywhere close so yes we do do that on the exit strategy um we do uh, but we always have a like a free consultation anyway with any business that we work with because we have to ultimately speak to them to make sure they are in the right place for us to even help them which yeah. we can kind of gauge from the conversation um if if um so if somebody doesn't know if they want to sell or buy, you know, because they kind of don't really know what they, they where they are at that point, we do have what we call a discovery session, um, which actually is a paid session, but that gives us a, a like a full day where we analyze their business model and we look at um, their, we look at how their integrity of their accounts, we look at their systems and processes and how they get financial inf financial information out of those processes yeah. to know where we might need to focus on to start improving things okay. and that's and that's how and that's how we work with the discovery session because um there's we don't really go in just on paid days because you could find anything and then people have a bit of an unknown expense so we think it's better to sort of just stop and do a, a bit sit back a little bit and review the whole business to see what we actually think does need doing yeah and in what that's, I mean, in what priority as well? Yeah, no, that's really good. I, I can imagine, like, for people that don't really know where to start with all this, having a conversation, it's certainly the first step, and, and then getting a bit of visibility, and then kind of thinking through the whole process of, okay, how's that going to work? How can I make it work for me? What do I need to get involved? Who do I need to get involved? And what's it going to look like? Uh, all useful stuff. Uh, it's the it's the same thing, isn't it? The information we then can make informed decisions whereas if we haven't got it we're sort of guessing and it's just not 
it's not a good foundation to work from, is it really? <laughs> no. And I think, um, I think if I'm honest, just being open and honest, where people struggle the most is the implementation of things. So obviously we help, we, you know, you've got to be ready to do this type of exercise because it's not actually that easy. And if I'm honest, we have to have quite difficult conversations sometimes because it's not even necessarily building the financial information is one thing. But if, if the owner, say, wants to sell it and step away and work, that actually means often means quite a big change in culture. Yeah. So we do work alongside people to help recommend and implement, but people have to be ready. You know, it does cause sometimes, you know, problems with some staff because maybe they've never been measured before and they are being measured now. Um, and maybe it's hard for the owner to actually implement it because they're not very good at managing operations and things like that. So, you know, de depending on the setup of the business and, and I suppose the, the owner's skill set, which often they sometimes have to be able to sit back and admit that maybe they're not good at certain things, yeah. um, then that's eventually what will help it transform. So it's not as simple really as just going in and go, oh, I'll just build your forecast, I'll just build your management accounts. Yeah. We always often come across sort of bottlenecks or things in the process that stop those processes from working. Brilliant. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So best place for people to touch base with you head to the website yeah if they head to the website all of our contact details so there is a calendar that you can book an appointment uh, but my contact details are all on there as well my telephone number and, and email address um, and all of our social medias are on there so linkedin tiktok and facebook so there's lots of ways people can get in touch with us yeah yeah You're on tiktok as well yeah, or ask, ask if you dance on tiktok or not well That's i do <laughs> like a bit of a dance actually <laughs> yeah. brilliant Oh, yeah. nice. That's all good. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you for everything that you shared. We're, sort of, we're out of time for now, uh, but you've certainly given us a, a lot to think about and just to sort of assess and review where we are. And yeah, we know now that we can have a conversation with you that can help bring a bit of clarity. Uh, for people listening, you'll know if it's the next step for you. Uh, should you contact Julie now? Should you think about it and schedule in some point in the future? Uh, seriously looking at what you can see with regards to forecasting and what your actual accounts are and how does that affect your decisions and lots of different things that we've touched on. Um, I think there's a lot of detail here. You, you would certainly benefit from catching the episode again. Uh, so make sure you listen to it again at some point. Uh, make sure you take some action as well. Um, everything that Julie shared can really help your business depending on where you are. Um, just take the next step towards either building credible growth um, or just avoiding some of the things um, that just isn't helpful when you want to build your business. Lots of things to uh, think about. We'll leave you to decide what that next step is. Uh, thanks again, Julie, for everything that you shared. Really appreciate your time being on the show. Thank you. And for everybody listening, remember that we believe in you and we believe in your potential. So we will catch you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 